Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Eddie's Toy Box and today we're going to be reviewing Pop Television's DC's Legends of Tomorrow number 377 through 381 including the bum, 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 New York Comic Con 2016 exclusive of Hawk Girl. Yes, one of the Pops was a Comic Con exclusive. You could actually at the time get this at Barnes & Noble. Um, but at the same time, it seems, I don't like when they do that, when they take one of the pops that should be just a common in the series and make it an exclusive just for the sake of having an exclusive. Like, there's no real rhyme or reason to have a Hawk Girl be the exclusive. Not everybody has a Barnes & Noble near them, not everybody can get to Comic-Con, so making this set kind of like unattainable in an aspect is kind of crazy like now if they did like a a variant of one of them and wanted it to be an exclusive that i'm all for but i don't know i digress and i rant but we're going to be taking a look at five pops today the dc's legends of tomorrow hawk girl the atom hawk man white canary and firestorm for those of you keeping track at home this is uh laurel lance oh, wait no not laurel lance laurel lance is the other one um well anyway this is white canary's second pop because Black Canary from the Arrow line is actually based off of her and not Laurel Lance. Why am I having a hard time? Her name's like Sarah. Sarah Lance. Yeah. Anyway, so if you watch DC's Legends of Tomorrow, it's a spinoff of Arrow and Flash. It's part of the Arrowverse. These are the Legends. Um, it's kind of sad because Heat Wave is left out. Rip Hunter is left out. And they're kind of big in the DC's Legends of Tomorrow, so it kind of makes you wonder what goes into making you pick these characters when Funko sits down and decides, I don't know, maybe it's uh, the licensors, I don't know. I'm kind of off my game today and covering from a cold, and I haven't done videos in a couple of days, so let's dive into <laughs> let's dive into five pops, right? So we'll start with the Atom here. The Atom got his start on Arrow, right? So this is the Atom suit. It kind of works in the in the essence of Ant-Man from Marvel. The suit can make him shrink. It can make him grow. Um, and it is pretty awesome. Um, you can see that the, the chest plate here has got the A there for the Atom. He's got, you know, the different shading of the red for the, the gloves here into the blue. And just the, the sculpt and design of it kind of gives it like an Iron Man feel, which I guess it should considering it's a, you know, a suit. Um... And you see all the mechanisms here, the sculpt there on the back here, all the details. And the Atom looks pretty awesome. Uh, he's got the visor here, which is clear, going around his helmet here. See, so looks like an Atom there all the way around. And the detail is pretty cool. I like the mold of it. I, I like that, uh, you know, articulation-wise, because these are based off of DC properties. They don't have to be bobbleheads like Marvel does. So you can move them back and forth and not have to worry about, you know, bobbling. Um, but I just fell off of it, but this one is a, a pretty cool one in the set. As far as paint flaws go, there aren't many, um, it, and there really could be considering there's a lot of different colors that went into making the Atom, but not many. Uh, we'll do a little 360 spin of them. So there you go. The Atom, Brandon Ralph, little tidbit, Brandon Ralph once played Superman. I know. And then we'll go to my favorite in the series, Firestorm. I really love how Funko does the flames now on pops that have fire. They make them like these translucent type of things. Um, and it's pretty cool. So you can see the fireballs in his hands here. I love it. I love it. It's awesome. And then the, the fire coming off of his head here. Which and if you look right here, you can see the top of his head is still, you know, the hair is painted black. So it's not like they just painted here and gave up. They painted the whole thing, and it looks like this fire piece was put on as an after afterwards. But the translucent is translucentness is pretty awesome. It starts off like a darker orange on the base here, and it goes into this like clear yellow towards the top. And uh, that uh, again, I, I I love it. Um, you get the little mechanism here that helps them maintain the firestorm. Um, the yellow and the red going all throughout it on the back here you can see two on the suit so not a lot of paint issues on him either uh, again articulation wise he moves his head back and forth I love that they went with the white for the pop eyes on this one with the black outline because it just really makes the pop stand out more um, and this one is 
pretty awesome. It is my favorite in the series, just because of you know the clear fire and the the white eyes and and the you know the red and the yellows on the suit here. It just it's a really well done pop. Like kudos to the designer, they did an amazing job on this one. So that is Firestorm. Well, knocked over the atom there. So then we'll look at the White Canary. White Canary, um, pretty you know basic. She's got like the white canary suit on. Um, you can see the the sculpt for the hair is pretty cool. Different like little strands throughout, so it's not just one flat piece. You know how Funko used to have um, the female pops just have one flat piece like Sally's hair from Nightmare Before Christmas, but the mold for this one you can see it goes in and out, in and out, and it's just you can tell the texture of her hair is it's different to really make it you know stand out. See like look at all that pretty cool um she's got the bow staff here or the staff white gloves and then if, she's solid white throughout it's almost like a cream color um but you can see the sculpt for the pants here where it meets her belt now this is her coat here and then she's got like a corset on underneath and then uh, like a shirt on and underneath that and it's all like the same color because it is in the show but you can see where the the sculpt and the design went through creating it so you can see it's not just one straight piece all the way through so the coat meets the bottom here and it's all just different layers which you know gives it that extra you know detail that it needs so that it's not just one flat cream colored piece and then you can see the pants here the detail in the pants all the ridges there and all the way around you can see the back of her you know the coat right here where it meets the bottom of her shirt of course that uh, and this is a pretty, you know, solid pop. And good for her. It's our second one. And then you've got, you know, the ill-fated lovers who coincidentally aren't on the show anymore. Um, but Heat Wave is, and he doesn't have a pop. So we've got Hawk Girl and Hawk Man. So you can take a look here. As far as the details go, you know, they got these awesome wings. And these look like a new sculpt for wings. It's not like they used Castiel's wings, which or the previous Hot Girl and Hot Guy wings. But as far as the the detail goes, they're, they're pretty cool looking. Hawk Hawk Man. He stands a little bit taller than Hot Girl, which kind of makes sense. If this was old and uh, old in Funko days, they would have been probably the same size. Um, he's got a solid thicker base, where she's thinner. You know, more of the female pose. The wings do help balance them out, so it's not like the wings make them go in a certain direction. It just adds to the balance there. You can see here, there's a little weapon here. Uh, the different brown shading with the flesh paint, it's pretty awesome too. The detail on the wings, the wings are solid. Like, they're thick, like even the thickness of that. You can see, like, the difference on the feathers here all the way around, and that's pretty cool. And I like how the wings have a lot of give to them. So it's not like they're frail and thin and can break. Like these are solid. They're they're very thick and just they're they have a lot going on for them. Now articulation because of the wings, they do move their head back and forth, but not much. Then you can see the detail for the helmet here, all the black and the gold going around here as well to the front. This is a pretty awesome pop. Now I didn't really care for the whole storyline, even though it's what brought the show together, but it's pretty cool so she's got the same thing going on for her helmet but for her you can see all of her hair coming out on the bottom of the helmet which is pretty cool all the way down here to the wings now what they've done is you know for her you're not getting much movement because her hair is actually sculpted so that each section of it goes on both sides of the wings so that she doesn't have movement um and then you can see some glue residue on the top over here but she's not holding a weapon just in the standard pose here they didn't even, like, she's got an empty holster here, but there's no weapon in it, so maybe she lost it in battle, who knows. And that's the New York Comic Con exclusive. So there you guys go, the Legends of Tomorrow, today. <laughs> I'll be here all week. What do you guys think of this set? Let us know in the comments below. Do you hope they make Rip Hunter or Heat Wave? Now, they did make Captain Cold already. He was part of the Flash series, an unmasked version, or a hun unhooded version, and a hooded version. So, you know, let us know. And as always, if you liked the video, give us a like, comment, subscribe for more. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Eddie's Toy Box, all the same name. Join us on Facebook, Pop It Off About Funko. Look for my call on Thursdays, popvinyls.com. Be kind to one another. Have a great day. Be legendary. And free the pop. We'll see you around.